I'm Jim Antrim, uh, yacht designer, naval architect, uh, graduate of Webb Institute of Naval Architecture. It's exciting to work on a Cal 40. I remember as a, you know, early teens, my dad taking me over to Marblehead to see one of the first Cal 40s, the revolutionary new ultralight. So uh, it's got a lot of history behind that boat. So, Jim, here's our situation. We had a nice meeting with Ethan from uh, Beta Marine, and we're trying to do a lot of things here at once. We have uh, an old engine placement situation going on inside the boat that's leading to a V-drive coming back down this way. We have a couple of problems with that. There are some known structural problems with the fiberglass in here. Uh -huh. We have a bronze shaft log which has a reputation for corroding inside of that fiberglass. So we're going to have to do a whole bunch of cutting in here and get that stuff out and either redo it or do something new. Our major objection here to this is that we have a V-drive system that puts all the systems of the engine aft and under the cockpit, under the Pure, quarter berth. Yeah. And we'd like to turn the engine around. So that got to be the question of where is the shaft log going to come out? and then what angle is the maximum angle down there? They were, he wasn't sure, Ethan wasn't sure about what you would recommend yeah. as a maximum angle. Everything's a compromise of many different factors. But, I mean, just from a sailboat point of view of what's in the water, it, it's hard to beat Lapworth's uh, installation here of putting the prop right up behind the keel and all that. But obviously it does drive everything else inside the boat and the, with the V drive and engine turned around. So I think, uh, as Cree, Cree pointed out, I think you'd want to have the shaft exiting far enough aft to get a strap in here to, to lift the boat, because otherwise you've got a free supported shaft uh, to worry about every time mm -hmm. you haul. And uh, just looking at it off the top of my head, sort of like you want to have the prop about in there, because you're trying to get the shaft as uh, flat as possible, obviously, mm -hmm. within the you know context of the diameter. You're trying to hit in a reasonable hull clearance, but you know you're you're thinking of the flow is coming up following the hull. Oh, I see. So we're not worried so much about the horizontal angle. We're worried about the water flow that's coming yeah. up along the hull. All right. Yeah. So it's it's one thing to view the prop as being at an angle to the horizontal. That's already bad, but it's, you know, it's really the flow is coming this way. So, so that okay. just sort of puts more emphasis on trying to get the sh a flat shaft angle. Yeah, no, that obviously with without having a V drive to have have the shaft exit up here means pushing the engine pretty far forward in the boat. That's yeah, it's one of the objections to the whole thing. Yeah. So I think it's uh, you sort of got to look at the compromise of prop size and, okay. and uh, shaft angle and how it fits in the boat. Well, I think the other thing we wanted to talk to you about today was we'll, we'll go take a look at the installation inside and how the floor plan's laid out, but this boat has a reputation for a lot of oil canning. Right. Uh, and by that I mean it's flexible. There are big panels that aren't really supported very well. I and mean, back in the day they used what they're called layers. It was a layer of mat and a layer of roving. Sure, yeah. And if th something wasn't stiff enough or strong enough, they added more layers. More layers, yeah. But it didn't necessarily make stiffness a priority. So the, the boat does have a reputation for the keel kind of wagging and creating some deformation in the keel, in the, in the flat floors here. Because this yeah. boat was very flat for its time. Oh, yeah. So I think we'd like to take a look at some of the structure inside and get some recommendations on how to do the glass work. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a very typical problem with you know, solid laminated boats with deep bilge keels and a lot of them wag around like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not fast to have your ballast going to lures. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's kind of counterintuitive at this yeah. point. So, All right, well, let's go up and take a look at that and we'll, we'll go from here. Okay. This configuration, the V-drive was mounted in here, and then the engine was back here, which made yeah. the, particularly the saltwater pump inaccessible, the freshwater pump, all the major service and maintenance items, the filters are all back in here that are very difficult to get to. So 
for all those reasons alone, it makes sense to turn the engine around, but we have to figure out if we're trying to violate that angle for efficient operation of the prop. Um, because we're going to cut the pan out, at least the idea was to cut this pan out and then build new stringers for the engine. Right. Maybe the, have uh, the front of the engine right about here. Think you can push it that far forward? You're, well, that's the question because we can oh, make the, we can make the hatch. Landing. Yeah, we could have the hatch a little bigger and use this as a plat for, platform for the pit. Oh, I got you. Yeah, yeah. So it's a compromise like all good boats are. I guess the, the question is how far do we push it with a down transmission? and a little bit of angle here, um, we can not violate the engine manufacturer's recommendations that the engine stay within 15 degrees of horizontal. Sure, yeah. Because we can get eight out of the transmission. So that opens up the conversation about some structural issues and tankage that we'd like to solve and mm -hmm. we'll get to that next. Okay. Yeah. We're not talking about increasing the structure, we're talking about putting a structure in. Boy, that's just solid chopper gun and you know, a crummy little Stringers running through the thing, really? foam covered with chalk, you know. Uh, Cree? Yeah. Hey, I'm glad you could join us. Come on aboard. Jim's here, and uh, we're working on what we do to improve the structure of this boat. Okay. Uh, as we mentioned, this boat was built in a time where they're still trying to understand fiberglass. Right. And I think it's the laminates are plenty strong. They just tend to flex a lot. So we have a dropped in piece of lead down on the bottom of this boat, a deep keel, and we have basically flat laminated panels without any bulkheads or coring or anything else down here. And this boat has a reputation for the keel kind of wagging. Right. And the other part of it is I've heard the complaint that these these panels are oil canning. You know, they're just yeah, they're pretty going big. up and down. And what I'd like to have Jim do is give us some recommendations on what to do in laminate structures okay. and improvements. And then I think the, the other thing would be we need to, do, as part of that, we need to discuss where the tanks are going because right. we've taken, we're going to take the fuel tank out from under the back there. Right. And we had a big water tank in here before, which we've pulled out. And I think we'll end up with the water tank forward under the V berth, which is kind of a conventional way of doing it, when we need it. And we'll have perhaps a fuel tank, port and starboard, and we also have the problem of holding tank, which is part of the Coast Guard regulations now. Yeah. Um, so you can see how much space we have here. You can walk down into this thing. Yeah. And it, uh, the idea being that somewhere in this assemblage here, we want drainage under all that. Yeah. But we'd want, probably want one house battery being a D8, and then maybe a starter battery backed by the engine itself. And maybe there's some room here to put a fuel tank in mm -hmm. and keep all the kind of fixed, all the major weight in the boat centered above the keel yeah. and in the center of the boat. Yeah. And that might give us the best, deepest um, place for a fuel tank. And then it opens up all this to doing the structural work without worrying about getting tanks in because we could have um, lateral bulkheads out. Um, I do want to have a bilge, as we discussed, that's a but dedicated... not that deep. Not that deep. I want to be yeah. able to get in here and, and wipe it down. So, I like, if I were laying on the floor and had to wipe it out, that's as deep as I want this Yeah, bilge. right, right. So, that's part of the engine beds, really, but we could put a tank in. Yeah. Either here and then put the batteries forward of it. But we have to have some partitions. And yeah, this sump is just crying out for some shear webs in it. Yeah. Um, and the next thing that occurs to me is how accommodating you want your accommodation to be because, I, you know, any normal boat today would have floors spreading the load out through this area into the sides. I guess the next structural thing that we have to talk about once we're out of the bilge here is these tabs on the sides of the hull. We'd like to get some structure there so those panels aren't flexing because you can actually flex them from the outside or the inside. Yeah. That was a fairly light laminate. The other thing we're going to do in the process of setting this boat up, uh, we're going to glass the hull to deck joint inside and out Yeah. Uh, to stop the leaks because the boat has a reputation for leaks. This boat had those leaks. 
But what we're talking about doing, and if you can confirm this, is when we come back in here, we're going to reinforce all this over these holes yeah, and sure. down and Makes laminate into the hull total on sense, both yeah. sides because we're taking the forward lowers out. You know, so if you could give us some suggestions on how much laminate needs to be put on the bulkheads and something in here, a recommendation on how to reinforce these hull sides and then really what we do about the floors. Um, we do have floors and tanks. Floors and tanks would be what we need to and I, I guess the question is if it really needs a structural element, if we can keep it to the minimum and we have something to walk over, that's fine. Um, if you feel that's necessary. If we can get uh, drawings of the boat, Fred and, uh, and I think Stan Honey's got some. All right. So uh, he just mentioned that last week to me. So if we can get drawings of the boat, it makes the whole planning the thing a little easier and get started and then we can get together again. And All right go over the whole, Good. whole deal. Terrific, that'd be great. Okay. Fred, here's the new uh, plan that um, I think we've got pretty much everything we talked about here on the drawing. Yeah. Suppose we could start with the with the engine propulsion system here. I think Cree wanted to put the engine aft and have a new shaft line which either gets the prop really close to the rudder or forces the rudder aft. Okay. And it was kind of a tight fit. Yeah, I never uh, liked that option in the yeah. first place. It uh, um, kind of pushes the rudder back, which is not what every other class boat has. Right. And Plus, you get you know that now you're adding the drag of a strut and the shaft and all that yeah. stuff. To where this is a pretty cool installation, the original shaft right. coming out of the back of the keel. And then you know when I took the CAD drawing of the engine and put it in where we had talked about having on a straight uh, line drive, the engine ends up just too far forward and uh, you know, walks off the galley and access to the main part of the boat. So we ended up going back to yeah. V-Drive Okay. as the original. One of my big concerns with this is that the boats have a real reputation for being flexible flyers, so to speak. Yeah, right, uh, right. It's, uh, there's uh, some oil canning issues and a thing called keel wag where the keel right. isn't really tied to anything but flexible panels. Yeah. And that's what I'd really like to do something about to stiffen the boat up a little bit. So yeah, they, what do you think we should do there? Well, the keel wag thing, that's, that's a pretty common symptom, not only on this boat, but lots of boats that have sumps, fiberglass mm -hmm. sumps form the top of the keel. and. Often they just don't put enough structure in there to keep it from wagging around, which which means when you're sailing the weather, your lead's hanging to leeward. Right. Not the most efficient thing to do. Plus, it, it fatigues the bilges here. Right. Um, anyway, we've decided to put these transverse webs in here. There's three of them. They're okay. Molded uh, off off the boat and then trimmed it and fit to place. And um, so. The, We've got them spaced right above the lead. All right. And uh, room in between for a diesel tank and a house battery and you know, all right. a shower sump. And a small sump front. forward to catch all that water. Yeah. And then and what we're... about the oil canning? The oil canning was so bad that it broke the tabs out of the bottom of the bulkhead. Right, yeah. You know, it's, it's getting to be an old boat. You know, the bilges have softened up over the years with lots of sailing and miles over the single skin laminate so the first obvious thing to do is make this panel a lot smaller by adding mm -hmm. a longitudinal stringer directly underneath the seat pack it's and that's where the the drawer faces yeah are exactly right so under essentially the, we use the, the drawer, drawer faces and tie them to the bottom of the boat all right and uh you know the panel is half as wide which is like a factor of four in making it more stiff and then we've just added, beefed up the laminate all the way through this whole area up all right. in the main salon and up above the V-berth in the bow where it tends to oil can when it pounds to weather. And then the so, back end of the keel here had no structure at all. I, th I think the original plans had a, uh, a frame back there. I'm pretty sure that I remember that, but uh, it was not put into your boat. Okay. And so we ended up making what I was calling an air tank. But really the idea is just to put a stiffener diagonally through here to break up that big panel because there's okay. a lot of water pressure down there in the right. keel. 
and um, Lapworth had a had a transverse member in there, but this will be m much more effective and keep stuff from falling down into the bilge. And uh, yeah, and it's, a, and it's a, at a depth that you can actually get in here and wipe it out and right. keep it clean. We've got a little pump out tube built in. Okay. Uh, inspection port. And then walking around on the deck, we noticed it's quite springy, and um, we haven't exactly decided. We're going to add some laminate uh, up in the cabin top here, but in the bow, there's sort of the typical fatigue in the corners of the front of the house, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we've obviously rig tension tends to bend the bow up, and that's what the cause of that is. So we've added a tra new transverse deck beam that ties into the old ones, and I ran it back at an angle so it supports right under the corner of that house. Okay. And, you know, a nice little knee, uh, which shows here. Right, nice little angled knee. Yeah, to keep, radius. you know, and keep the headroom clear and not interfere with the accommodation up and in the And it, it ties it in close to where that shelf is, which right, is good. Exactly. We have a lot of enthusiastic people talking about this project. Yeah. And, you know, there's a, I wanted to make sure that we had an engineering plan um, which made sense and did, and actually accomplished what everybody yeah. wants to accomplish with this boat. I think that was necessary. This is a 50-year-old boat that uh, has seen a lot of sailing. Yeah, that's true. These, these, all these boats from that era where the early days of fiberglass are all single skin and it's just a lot more flexible than uh, we're doing boats now. So with the flex over all these years, the, you know, there's fatigue and the, everything gets a little softer than it was in the first place. Mm -hmm. So and I, I think it's nice that so, we've managed to you know, keep the Cal 40 as a Cal 40 and just basically make it a little stiffer and bring it back to yeah. the way it was intended to be in the beginning. It's great. You know, recover its sailing abilities and uh, you know, extend its life. Good. Good, excellent.